This edition of Mac Voices is supported by MacPaw, the makers of Clean My Mac 3. Get rid of all those extra unnecessary files easily by visiting cleanmymac.com. And by Mac Voices Magazine, our free Flipboard magazine that brings you some of the best Mac, iPhone, and iPad productivity tips on the web. High in signal, low in noise, just like Mac Voices, Mac Voices Magazine includes information on how you can get more out of your Apple technology. Subscribe at macvoices.com slash magazine or search for Mac Voices Magazine on Flipboard. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, all of us enjoy playing with our photos. All of us want to make our photos look better. We want to do more things with our photos. Sometimes that can be a little challenge if you aren't professionally trained or don't have the right eye for it. And I count myself right in that camp. Um, and I came across uh, a utility, thanks to Derek's story um, of, of the digital story, that has let me do some things with my photos that I was not completely comfortable with before, or at least gave me more flexibility. And that utility is Image Framer from Apparent Software. And I have Jacob Gorbin here uh, to tell us all about Image Framer. Jacob, welcome back to Mac Voices. It's great to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. So you and I first con connected at Macworld years ago, um, talking about another of, of your utilities. Uh, yes, I actually think it was a WWDC two years ago. Was it? Okay. Yeah, we might have met at Macworld as well. We presented at 2011. But yes, two years ago, we talked about Cash Calculator, the personal finance app. And this was the focus of our talk back then. Yeah. And, and yeah, sorry about that. Sometimes the conferences all start to run together. Um, you know, I can't blame is, you. Yeah. <laughs> but. but but Image Framer now is in version four, and I'm a little embarrassed that I didn't really appreciate what Image Framer could do until I heard Derek uh, Derek Story talking about it on his podcast. And mm -hmm. since then, I've I've played with it for a lot of things, and I don't want to steal your thunder. So I'm just going to let you roll in and tell us what Image Framer is and what it does. Well, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank Derek Story. Uh, for doing this uh, great kind of podcast uh, sponsorship with me. And uh, yeah, he's been also good in revealing specific use cases for Image Framer that I didn't think about. Uh, and um, so for like people who are not familiar with it, Image Framer is an application that allows to quickly add frames, mats, or borders to either photographs or artwork if you're an artist. Uh, it allows to preview how a frame again, photo artwork will look on a wall, for example, if you want. Or you can just print out that image or save it and share um, you know, on social media or if you have a portfolio or a, uh, a website. So uh, this is the main, these are like the main use case that we see people uh, using Image Framer uh, for. And the customers range from professional photographers, and I think these are the uh, the largest segment of our customers, to people just um, you know family photographs, like doing family photographs for Facebook or for scrapbooking, and of course artists and even some people in the professional framing community who you know do frames for a living. Um, so, uh, depends on your use case, Image Framer can be, you know, either the fun application to add, uh, you know, holiday themed borders to your photographs, to creating almost photorealistic um, look for, with multiple mats and, and frames to your, you know, art or frames. So, the use case really um, depends on the, on the customer. Uh, I was uh, before I started playing with Image Framer and before I started learning a little bit about some of this, I was very much a minimalist kind of frame person. I wanted the the simplest black frame, the thinnest black frame I could get around because I always thought that enhanced the image a little bit. And I didn't appreciate, and and I think that might be why uh, your your market is uh, is largely professional photographers. Didn't appreciate the what what a, a, the proper mat and the proper frame can do for a photo. And it sounds like it's a really simple utility, but there's a lot there to it. 
because it lets you change and tweak the colors and the styles and all. And as you said, not just for um, online use or on screen use, but also I've taken images I've shot that I want to go have printed and framed. And it, it lets me play with it a little bit. And so I can start to decide, OK, a wood frame would look nice. Um, this color mat, that color mat. It, it changes your whole perspective, I think, on your fo on your photos, on your own photos, let alone anything uh, that you, you might buy commercially. Uh, yes. And as a backstory, this specific use case of previewing how a framed uh, you know, art will look like on a wall, this was the the original goal and idea behind image framers. So I started 11 years ago and the story is that my mother paints and and so, you know, she paints and then we hang her, you know, paintings on the walls uh, and, you know, they are, sometimes they're framed and I, I remember how it looks. So they go, you know, to frame shop and then they have these small corners and they try to visualize how the small corner will look like when the whole image is framed with this small corner. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it's it's a, more of a guess uh, than, you know, the real feeling of how it will look. Um, and you can rely on the framer to, to know and to suggest a good, a good solution without being in your room kind of in the color. So it, the initial goal for Image Framer was to find the, the colors and the widths of frames and to visualize how it will look on a, on a wall. So even such a simple thing as a wall color can be configured in image framework. So if you have a, a painted wall, you can see, you can kind of set the color and preview how it will look there. And even the small touches like uh, the shadows um, that you can configure like with direction of the shadows a little bit uh, can help to provide this, uh, you know, more realistic look. Yeah. And, and I've gone to, to framing shops and the first thing that you do is you look at that wall of corners and you just want to throw up your hands and say, now how am I ever going to decide? And so I don't know if there is, if someone with formal training in it knows where to start or if there are places to start. When I started playing with Image Framer, I would just say, oh, that looks interesting and, you know, drop it on the picture and, oh, no, that's that's horrible. You know, I thought it was okay, but it was horrible. And and you just also mentioned the width of mats, you know, the number of mats, the width of mats, the, the color of the mats. There's so many variables here that you can play with until you get something you really like. And it's a lot better than spending that that 15 or 30, 40 minutes at a framing shop trying to decide, you know, this might be this, it, this might be it. Okay, that's about right. Yeah, just go ahead and find it, get it done. You know, and, <laughs> and, and then you end up with something you're not completely satisfied with. Yeah, so the, of course there is some professional know-how that the framers might have, right? They might have the the understanding and luckily um, uh, last year I, uh, I I hired a work with uh, someone who does kind of came from this field uh, so Alexandra and she is helping in also in with the writing the articles that will uh, you know help people like educational articles about how to find the best mats or frames and how to experiment so we have these articles on our like website, uh, and we publish them about once a month to newsletter subscribers, or you know, just they're just on the website on Facebook. So we do also now try to educate people because this process can be, you know, again, it's a long process, and for people who are, uh, you know, not versed in the little bit of theory that's behind that, um, and myself included, right? So uh, it, it can, you know, make the path to a good solution shorter or bring you to a better solution, these articles. But in general, yes, it's, it's just much easier, right? And you're not getting on people's nerves when you ask for it to try 100 different frames. We have several hundred of like photorealistic frames in the, in the application. So, so you can just, you know, try them out or quickly see they're sorted by categories like materials. Yeah, it's um, it's a good way to like, to see and kind of nail down the look that you want for your your completed artwork. Now, I've, I've a couple of angles I want to attack this from, but the first one is let's let's go a little bit geek on everyone. Um, you draw, you you're putting the the images into the into the frames. Um, what kind of resolution can you get out of the frames that you provide if I decide to print something, um, and especially if I try to decide to print something, say, on a large, large format 
printer to to put it up on a wall or uh, maybe not necessarily as a permanent uh, decoration, but you know something that I want to have there. What kind of resolution am I getting? Well, you're getting. It depends. <laughs> Uh, so uh, we have some frames are, you know, photographed and scanned with good resolution that will allow at least uh, the same kind of original size that they were originally the frames, like the width that they were originally to look good. If you were to print them, um, this is if, if we're talking about like textured frames, like, uh, you know, wooden frames or metal frames. And again, so this depends. Uh, when I took the photos, I always try to take them like, with a good SLR camera and uh, like with the best resolution possible, and sometimes with different angles, and you actually get this lighting like for the different sides of the frame. You will have the different uh, light, making it even more realistic. So most, or at least a large selection of the frames, can be printed at a pretty high resolution. Uh, certainly enough to be, you know, like on the wall when people don't usually come too close if you print too large, very large, and. Uh, mats are no problem at all because mats are color and they generate it uh, dynamically. And uh, for the other stuff, like we have, um, we also have vector frames, basically um, designed either in Illustrator or some other applications, and then um, and then the application loads them. And so these, you know, it's PDF. It can be scaled as vector frames. Uh, but the vector frames are mostly for the themed frames, like you know, holiday or some events or romantic frames, like because it's more illustration kind of frames. I don't think I fully realized that that you you take photos of frames that, that you say photorealistic, but they're actually photos of frames that then you do the magic to and and put my picture into them. Uh, well, yeah, so there's there was some work involved in getting the frames, right, because they have to be photographed, straightened, uh, cut correctly, make them seamless so they repeat well when you when we take, a, you know, a, a part of the frame. Uh, some of the frames come from uh, catalogs uh, of suppliers, but I think today at least half of them are just photographs from real frames, either in frame shops or from real art. Uh, and yeah, so there is work involved. Um, if you have your own frames that you want to add, the Image Framer, uh, like the Pro Edition, it has the uh, what we call a frame editor. And in frame editor, you can bring in your own graphics and use that as the basis for, for the frame. So you can basically enhance your collection. We, we see people that do that either um, um, either frame shops or some just artists that have their own frames that they want to use to visualize or they have their suppliers. Um, so th there's quite a variety of people who do that. And with Image Framer 4, we make it even easier now to share and save these, coll these collections or load the uh, frames from other people. Uh, so the this was one of the main kind of areas of Image Framer 4 is the better collaboration. It also allows us to release new frames um, in this way, uh, like, like just downloadable frames. So, for example, for Fourth um, of July and Independence Day in Canada, like July first, we had we had uh, vector frames, maybe about 10, 20 frames for each occasion that you could download and then use those, uh, you know, to to spice up your festive photos from from these days. And we have more of these for um, main. Uh, holidays, let's say, especially in the U.S. I would think that the framing people, uh, the manufacturers of frames, would be beating down your door to get their frames featured in Image Framer because, it, again, it, 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 it adds the flexibility. It lets, lets people play at home with some of this stuff and I would think, therefore, would generate a lot more sales. I would think so as well, but it's not. it doesn't work like that. Uh, so it appears that frame manufacturers are still pretty much you know, working by the old model of we produce the frames and then we have distributors and distributors go to the frame shops or museums or galleries and kind of promote the frames. So uh, we, we tried to approach some of them and there was just basically no interest, uh, no interest at all. And I think mainly because they are just in this, like, in this mood that that distributors and like maybe we should go through the distributors and this would, would work better, but then it's more local. 
Well, even if they go through the distributors, though, the idea that their frames are featured in Image Framer and can be played with, and, and also for the framing shops. I mean, the, the ability to take my image, even if it's just a rough scan, it doesn't have to be super high res, and then show me the different mats and different, you know, different things and then be able to print out something that I can take home and you know hold up to my wall and see how I like it. And I don't mean super high res or even super high sized, but you know, that that to me would be a huge advantage. Um, and also the the idea that I'm I'm sure that you can when I tweak the metrics of how wide I want the mat, that that is an accurate metric that then okay now you can you can export well export the information or get the information so then they can cut the mat to that actual size. Yes, yeah, so there is there are some way for that. Some image um, like some framing shop shops actually use um, use image framer uh, for specifically for frame shops. There are more professional applications that, that go hundreds of dollars and they usually incorporate also the. Uh, the database, um, or they, you know, they manage the supply of the um, of the frames for the framers, um, and some do the visualization. Most of them for Windows. So I think on the Mac, uh, I'm currently like the the main competitor, <laughs> or the almost the only competitor in their field. And also the goal was still kind of to keep this simple enough because I looked at the other professional software and, you know, they are like the Microsoft Word of, of, uh, of, of text editors. <laughs> yeah. Um, right now, you know, what, what I, I want to shift over because we've been talking now about the frame shops, but let's talk about the photographers. Um, for me, I'm shooting things with my iPhone, maybe with a, an SLR and dropping it into Image Framer to play with a little bit. But you also have some, some professional workflows built into this. Um, so that if the the guys that are doing this for a living can easily use Image Framer to enhance their work. Yeah, so th this is also something that's new in uh, version four. Um, we added two or maybe three things that should help professionals. Um, one is batch processing built in into the application. So now you can select the folders of images and use a template that you created um, to quickly process images and. Image framework not only allows to add frames, but also things like watermarks, either text or um, images. So you can, you know, add your copyright or your logo, or even, uh, you know, some of the exit data like location or file name or the caption right into the photograph um, as you as you process them. So we have the batch processing, and we have now um, a Lightroom plugin. Uh, it's a ba it's a basic uh, plugin for that used during expert process in Lightroom, and it will invoke Image Framer in the post-processing stage in Lightroom to, again, to apply uh, a template, like a frame, to your photo. So if you already have your catalog in, uh, you know, in Lightroom, like many professional photographers do, and even, you know, amateurs like I do, uh, <laughs> you will, uh, it, it's also a good way. So uh, this works especially well for people, you know, if you have a, if you have a, Maybe a portfolio that you want, um, you know, to quickly process, right? Because uh, it, it, it's uh, if you apply templates, it certainly should be something that you know that fits uh, different uh, photos. And the image framer will fit a template over, uh, you know, different aspect ratios and um, and landscape on in portrait images, so it will you know look the best that it can be on different uh, aspect ratios. Um, and the third integration we have is with uh, Apple Photos. Again, more for the like day to day, not not professional photography, I guess. Um, uh, so there is also a plugin that will take a photo, kind of do the round trips through Image Framer, and it, you can it's one it's a one by one thing because uh, Apple Photos doesn't allow for batch batch processing. Um, I think it will also become unnecessary now with High Sierra because in High Sierra, Apple opened um, Apple Photos a little bit and will now allow basically to edit image in an external application without a plugin. So it's basically we'll be able to call Image Framer just from um, Apple Photos directly. Mm. And it will save back. But but for for the you know that 10 the 12 we have this support for the extensions, the editing extensions uh, built in. Uh, so these are the kind of the main three things that will like I guess help professional photographers. The other might be that the support for Photoshop files uh, for saving and loading, but uh, without 
you know, without layers, which because this is very proprietary to 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 Adobe, kind of this full support for Photoshop. MacPaw and Clean My Mac are supporting today's edition of Mac Voices. What is Clean My Mac 3 and why should you care? That's easy. You've been using your Mac for how long now? Months? Years? You've added and deleted applications, probably just by dragging the application icon to the trash. You've added, turned on, and turned off plugins. You received more email than you want to think about, along with the attachments, whether you wanted them or not. That adds up to a whole lot of files taking up a whole lot of space on your Mac that would be better suited for more valuable, more current, more active files. Sure, you could go looking for all those files on your own and spend the weekend doing it. Or you could just surrender, wave the white flag, and nuke and pave your drive, deleting everything and starting over. You should have all your applications back in place, all the serial numbers entered, and all the settings reset by Christmas. Okay, New Year's. Or you could use Clean My Mac 3 from MacPaw and get a better, faster, leaner, meaner Mac in just a few minutes. Clean My Mac 3 gets rid of old caches, app leftovers, hidden files, and old email attachments. And that's just for starters. All that and more add up to a Mac that's better than it was when you started. You can download a demo of Clean My Mac 3 at cleanmymac.com right now and find out how much stuff is on your Mac that doesn't need to be there. With just a couple clicks, your Mac can be running smoother and more efficiently. That's Clean My Mac 3 from MacPaw, available as a standalone app or as one of the over 90 terrific apps in Setapp at setapp.com. Thanks to MacPaw and Clean My Mac for their support of Mac Voices. When, when I drop a photo into ImageFramer, um, should I be working on a copy of the photo? Um, or, in other words, can I? Is it is it possible for me to accidentally save something back over my original photo with the frame in place, and I really didn't want to commit to that? <laughs> you might, yeah. So it's better to work on a copy. Okay. Yeah. So either either save as or work on a copy. So ImageFramer will not save unless you ask it to. Uh, to save, but uh, but it, it will save back in the same format if you want, or you can save as in different size and formats. So we have these uh, um, you know options when saving, basically to select the format and the resolution and the DPI. Um, I, I do want so previously in Image Framework three we actually disallowed saving back in the same image, uh, but it didn't work well with cases like uh, you know Lightroom export because these applications, they export something and they wait back for it to change to save back. So this wasn't working with Lightroom, for example. So we added the saving in, in you know, saving back to the same file. Now, maybe we should have uh, some kind of a warning, I'm not sure, but but this is how most editing like, applications work, right? If you know what you're doing, if you're even taking a photo to Photoshop, if you save it back, it's, it's back. Hopefully everyone has also, you know, Time Machine or some other backup solutions just in case, but in general, it now works like a, like any other editor. Yeah, and, and I asked the question just because you hit it. That's that's the way we think it works, but it doesn't seem to be quite a standard yet. So sometimes you, you are required to save to a different file name, or at least you get a warning. Sometimes you're not, and the last thing we want is to have anyone have their original photo altered in a way they didn't want to. And, then they call and yell at you and yell at me. So we don't want that. Um, you, you mentioned you were talking about Derek's story and some of the use cases that have come up that you weren't even uh, in, anticipating. And I'm always curious to see because I know how I can get locked into this is what I want to use the software for, and I forget that it could be used or didn't know it could be used for something else. What are some of the more interesting use cases you've come across? Well. Uh... From Derek, I think the main was one was the greeting cards that he mentioned. So because we now have these themes frames for different occasions, uh, and you can add text, you can almost use Image Framer as an editor, like uh, to create a postcard. Um, so so he had this idea, and he had some examples uh, that he showed um, on his site, um, and I also asked Alexandra to kind of to do a tutorial like that because based on his idea, so she was able to create a, like a Valentine's Day postcard, and actually it was pretty interesting how she did it. Like it, even I was surprised how she would use different uh, like overlays and emoji to add to add stuff to the to the design. So this was quite interesting. Um, we have people who uh, again maybe not as original, but they use it to. 
um, to sell stuff on you know Etsy or eBay or uh, so for example if they do gain some art even if it's uh, not the art uh, for example they they will use it to um, to see how it might look right basically to to make it stand out more when you have this wall of you know offers from different manufacturers so like maybe the ones that are framed are um, you know they are, they look differently they look better. So we have customers like that. Uh, we have some interior designers, but you might kind of guess, right? This might work for interior designers. Um, um, then um, we have, I know a customer who is, uh, you know, they work in the business of, um, you know, artwork for hotels. So for them, for example, the batch processing was very good because they could, you know, create a lot of different images and then see it like give it to give them to people who go to the hotels and kind of see how it will look on the on the walls um i guess scrapbooking but so i don't see everything that people create right i could see people who do um, um like they have a blog about like family blogs and they have these old photographs. And so they use these also the frames that give this old look, even if the photographs, you know, just in an album. So they f scan them or photograph them and then import them and they give them that antique look. So quite a lot really. Uh, and I, I wish I, I knew like what every, everybody does. So, you know, if, if people come for support, I will usually ask them if they make, can share like what they use image framer for. Uh, so that's how I kind of, I know some of these stories or, or through Facebook, but some people write to me. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, uh, I don't know if you want to like the touching story. So I have a customer who is probably now 95 or 96 years old and he would write me emails and uh, send me, he even sent me once like a real mail with a, like small Polaroid kind of like photographs of framed art that he does. And he usually photographs like flowers and seasonal images, and then he adds frames to them. And he has a wife who is, um, um, you know, who is uh, like in a hospital for many years. And he comes every day. And, and so he prints these seasonal images and they put them in the hallway and use them in the, like the donations or fundraising. Uh, so they sell them, you know, like ten dollars for the for the hospital to raise. And I, I heard at least. So this was kind of the most touching story, maybe that I heard, because this person every day, like for ten years, comes to his wife and he uses it to. And he just he right, he's just like ninety four, ninety five, and he he still does that, which is really great. Yeah, you you don't you didn't anticipate some of those things when you start up with a project like yours, I'm sure. And yeah, that's that's cool. That's really cool. Um, what what else? What have we missed here? Um, because I, I don't because I'm not a professional photographer. Uh, I don't know what what else to ask. I I know how I've been using Image Framer, but is there anything else that we should know about it? Be, uh, and and then we can send folks to try it out. I'm not sure exactly you know, what to you know to focus on here. The, the one thing is we try to to walk the line between between like being a versatile application and being easy to use, intuitive. And this is a hard line to walk. Uh, and I think the like versatility is what allows like really different, you know, people from different fields of life to use it. And again, this is not necessarily for professional photographers, but again, we have a lot of designs for just family, the family occasion, you know, for children photos. Uh, so quite a lot of those uh, use cases. Uh, we, we do release new frames from time to time, either like we now prepare seasonal frames. So we had the summer frames and we will have uh, like autumn, you know, fall frames uh, coming up. Um, and uh, these are vector frames. So they are kind of have the specific mood and illustrated. So I have a designer who's working uh, and creating these frames. Um, for again, for professionals, we have uh, things like the frame editor. So if you have your own designs for Illustrator or you have your own frames, you can use that. Uh, we have this report. We can create like a PDF report, like again, if you want to take it to your framer, 
uh, and have these like the sizes printed and the different layers. Um, we have a little bit of access support again for professionals. Uh, um, basically, it's just you know it's uh, it's an, and it's another way to spice up the, the photographs. Even again, even for social media. Right, it, it, that, the frames don't have to be fancy. You just can, can use it as just as a, like simpler utility. But there is the, all this power behind it. it you know, it, it keeps the color spaces of the photographs or if photo is uh, like specific, like professional, like Adobe RGB color space, it will keep that or like, you know, for the new monitors with the wide dynamic range. Um, so yeah, quite a lot of quite a lot of work went into it. Yeah, and and I have to say, you're talking about trying to to straddle that line between usability and and sophistication. And at least at the level that I'm using it, I've found it to be very intuitive and very easy to understand. Um, I didn't feel okay. like I had to go back and you know dig out a manual. If I were doing the Lightroom stuff, well, first of all, I'd probably be more familiar with say the round tripping workflows and and that kind of thing. But for just to get started with it. It certainly there. There's there's. I'm not going to say there's no learning curve, but there's such a shallow learning curve that it no more than any other program that you would open up, and it's the sophistication of it. You don't. I mean, and and some of these the the frames you're talking about for the holidays. I mean, they don't have to be garish um, designs or anything. They can be very subtle, but it's surprising what kind what kind of message you send or mood you can create with just the frame, no matter what the picture. So I, I've really come to appreciate that versatility and and what it can do for my my simple images. Uh, yes, yeah, so then this is the kind of the idea, right? The idea is just to give people more options, and and there are very like little number of applications that that have anything close to that or the frame designs. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like the you know, the real life frames is something that fades out in today's world because uh, everything moves to digital and kind of the know how and just the appreciation of how something looks in a frame kind of it's it's it, it's getting lost, I guess. Uh, and and we can see that in the business that, you know, the number of frame shops are, um, you know, is reducing. Um, so, uh, um Hopefully, this can kind of bring a little bit of the understanding and just just the ability for people, you know, to do that if they didn't consider. Well, I'm looking forward to. I've, I was not aware of the articles on the website. I'm looking forward to trying to learn a little bit about why. I'm, I'm one of those people that I know what I like. I just don't always know why I like it. And then you try to go and, and get a little understanding about why you like it, and it. it it improves your inf your understanding and your information so that maybe you don't have to be so scattershot and I don't have to try 800 frames before I find three that I like. I may be able to narrow it down to, okay, I start with 50 and then narrow it down to three. So, Yes, and especially the things like the, get the width and the sizes and how many layers to add. Uh, these are the things that add so much that, you know, it, it, it can just take, again, more time and kind of confuse people even more. Yeah, I, I was one of those confused. Well, I still am one of those confused people, but <laughs> Image Framer helps. Uh, Jacob, uh, what kind of pricing do we have for Image Framer? So it comes in three tiers currently. Um, there is a light version at $30. Um, there is a standard, so to speak, at 40 and a Pro at $70. Um, uh, the, the, let's say the light has all the frames, um, so and you can add all the frames and layers and masks. So it's it, it's fantastic just for you know everyday use. Uh, the only thing uh, that the standard adds are the overlays. So if you want to add a, like text logos, uh, um, any information basically text like so it creates more of an editor out of that. Um, the pro version adds quite a lot more. So first of all, the frame editor, which, which is almost like a separate application. Uh, <laughs> Because there's again so much behind that, uh, it adds all these. Uh, um, let me remember. <laughs> uh, uh, so we have the uh, support. So again, frame editor. So you can export your own frames that you created. 
uh, you can have these design reports printed. You can have the EXIF information or IPTC information for professional photographers added to the like the text watermark. So if you again you have a caption or a date that you want to include in the result, uh, probably something else because I, I just don't remember right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have this all on the kind of the by page, the, the summary of that. Well, I, folks, I encourage you to go and check it out. Is there a demo version? I've forgotten. Yeah, so there is just, you can download the, the application. It works as a demo in the Pro. Uh, at, um, it, it's not time limited. It just adds like an overlay, you know, like a watermark on the image while you work. So uh, it's a subtle watermark, but you probably wouldn't want to, you know, to use it and, you know, show your work with that. Um, so, uh, and the demo also doesn't have all of the frames. So it has, a subset of the frames so you could taste everything, but because the frames come from our server and they kind of tied to the um, to the uh, licensing. So the pro frame, uh, I forgot also the pro version has a additional frames. So for example, we have a, one of the largest manufacturers, Larson Jewel, and we have quite a selection of their frames in the pro uh, version. Okay. Um, I, I, folks, I want to tell you to go and, and check it out. Even if you just check out the demo version, um, first of all, it's fun to play with. Second, I think it'll open your eyes a little bit to maybe a, an aspect of, of displaying your photos online or on your wall that you've missed. Um, but it, it also enhances those photos. Uh, and it's just it's one more tool in your creative toolkit to, yeah. to make things look good and maybe differentiate you from someone who doesn't take the time or maybe doesn't have quite the knowledge. Jacob, the website is? The website is uh, apparentsoft.com slash image framer, or just apparentsoft.com, and then you can click on the right application. Okay. Uh, are you on social media, too, where folks can find you? Well, personally, I am. Uh, I have a, I'm on mostly on Twitter, uh, at Jacob Gorbin, like my first and last name. Uh, I don't post much, but I'm pretty active, especially uh, you know with customers. We have the company. Uh, we have image framer. Facebook page, so it's facebook.com slash image framer. And this one is pretty active, so we post examples there, we post contests, we post all these articles. Uh, so this is being maintained well. And there's a Twitter account for a parent software as well, a parent soft uh, on Twitter, uh, mainly, mainly for updates and uh, support, I guess. Okay, so there's a lot of ways that people can get in touch with you. And... Yes, all this information is available on this site. So the social for the products is available on the website, and the about page has the social for the people. Great. Well, thank you so much for the time, and thank you for Image Framer. It, it's it's one of those utilities that I wasn't quite sure about, and then I started playing with it, and it's like, wow, this is you know, it's opening my eyes a little bit. Um, and uh -huh. so I've, as a result, I have things hanging on my wall that probably wouldn't be um, if it wasn't for Image Framer. Because I, I, I'd like to see those if you if you can share later. I, I might, yeah, privately, privately. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jacob, thank you again. Um, next time you have something interesting and a new update to Image Framer, maybe come back and we'll talk about some of your other utilities. Yeah, certainly, Great. certainly, there is work being done. Uh, there always on, is on other being stuff done. as well. Yeah. So yeah, we'll have something to talk about, I guess. Yeah, you had nothing else to do, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. It's one of the fun things about doing this show that I get to share discoveries that I make with you, things that I hear about or see or get a press release on or something. And it, it, maybe it doesn't always make the mainstream, but they they really do increase your creativity and 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 hopefully make you understand the world around you a little more and what you like and what you don't like until the next time and as always thanks for watching visit macvoices.com for show notes links to subscribe and to connect with chuck on twitter google plus facebook youtube vimeo soundcloud the mac voices blog the mac voices dispatch our weekly newsletter and on mac voices magazine free on Flipboard that helps you do more with your Apple tech. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.